Okay, let's learn Victory in Jesus. We're going to learn this hymn in the key of G major. And uh, before we tackle the, the song Victory in Jesus, let me just encourage you again. Uh, learn your scales, your 12 major scales. Very important that you know them, very familiar with them, and uh, you can play them uh, easily. If you do, if you know your scales, then you're going to know uh, your chords also by default. You'll know your key signatures better. Um, and uh, it'll help you with all the theory that goes into playing hymns and um, embellishing hymns, adding uh, uh, more notes and playing in a more full style. Uh, now, you, do, you need to learn your, your scales in a certain order. Learn them in the circle of fifths. That means you start with, start with C, that's all white notes, and then you go up five notes um, every time till you get all the way through the 12 major scales. Um, so... Uh, if you learn them in this order, you would start with C, and then the scale you'd learn next would be the fifth note of the scale you just played. So if you play the C scale, the next scale would be G, because it's the fifth note of our previous scale. And we go in fifths like that all the way, because it, it's called the circle of fifths, because it'll end up back at C. Now if we do that, then we start with um, C, which is all white notes, and then we go to G, which is one sharp, then we go to D, which is two sharps, C and C sharp and F sharp are your sharps. And then from D, we go to A, going up fifths. And then that adds another sharp, C, F, and G sharp in the key of A, the scale of A. And then we go to E, which adds a sharp. It has F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, D sharp. And then from E, we go to B, which has five sharps. It's all black notes. C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, A sharp, G, uh, G sharp, A sharp. And then from B, using the fifth note of the scale we just played, we end up at G flat, F sharp. F sharp or G flat, same thing. And this has, uh, if you think of it in sharps, it has si uh, six sharps. If you think of it in flats, it has six flats. Um, and then from here we go to D, and then D flat, uh, sorry, from G flat to D flat. D flat has five flats. Now we're in flat territory, and it goes down in flats. So from D flat, the fifth note of the D flat scale is A flat, and now we have four flats in the A flat scale. And then from the A flat, we go to E flat. E flat has three flats, and then B flat has two flats. And then we go to F, which has one flat. And then from F, if you notice, we're back at C. So if you learn them in that, that order, not only will you be familiar with your key signatures, and it'll help you memorize which, uh, which keys or scales have flats or sharps and that sort of thing, but also you'll have a better understanding of chords and their relationship to each other. In the circle of fifths, and if you picture it, um, you'll see that uh, it, 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 it makes a circle. And you can see the key signatures there. And you can see from C, we go to G, G to D, then A, and so on and so forth. And uh, the keys that are next to each other are related to each other because they share most of the same notes. C and G share all the same notes except for one, and the difference being the F. The F is sharp in G. It's natural in C. But if you go from C, say, to D flat, they share much less notes. Um, C has all white notes, and D has um, all black notes but two. So they're, they're not related. Uh, and the chords also, if, the, if, if you look at the circle of fifths, the C chord, the C scale is next to the G scale, that, uh, re that uh, applies to the chords as well. The C chord is closely related to the G chord. In the key of C, you'll have the G chord many times. In the key of G, you'll have the C chord. However, in the key of G, you won't have you won't have a uh, D flat chord unless it's you know an accidental, which that does happen. But they are not related. They share no notes with each other. So it helps you understand um, G and D are closely related. G and C. Right? They are closely related. Um, and let me give you this hint. When we talk about, when we learn our, 
our hymns, we always we always want to think and remember the three primary chords of the key we're in. So we're in the key of G, the three primary chords are the one chord, which is the home key, home chord. It's the chord we always go back to. It's the G chord because um, we're in the key of G. The four chord is the key of C, and the five chord is the key of D, uh, is the chord D. Um, now, if you notice on the circle of fifths, it's the one chord is is the is that G. You see that G scale there, the, the key of G, and then the four chord is the one on the uh, on the left, and the five chord is the one on the right, and uh, so that imp that applies to all your keys. If you go to the key of F, your four chord is the B flat, your five chord is the C chord. And uh, your your one chord is that is of course the key we're in, and so uh, learning your scales and understanding the circle of fifths, getting a gra good grasp on it, um, unlocks a lot of this information in your brain. Okay, so if you already know the G scale, skip ahead. But here it is: five finger on G, four finger on A. This is in the left hand, by the way. Three finger on B, two finger on C, one finger on D. Cross over with the three finger. To the E, play the F sharp with the two finger and then thumb on the G. Then we do the same thing in reverse to come down. Two finger on F sharp, three finger on E, thumb under the three finger to D, two finger on C, three finger on B, four finger on A, and then pinky on G. Now keep in mind you want good, f good uh, form. You want to have your wrists up. Uh, don't drop them under the keys, but hold them up. Your hands should be, your, your fingers should be curved, almost as if like you're holding an apple in your hand. Uh, and then your fingers should do most of the moving. Your wrist and arm should be relatively steady. And you want to work on doing them fluid and clearly and crisply, where all those notes concise and separated. Don't get sloppy and play notes at the same time or flat fingered. Right hand will go with, it's a mirror image of the left hand, so we start with our thumb on the G, two finger on A, three finger on B. Here we go under with the thumb to the C, two finger on D, three finger on E, four finger on F sharp, five finger on G. And then it's the same thing in reverse to come down. Go to the four finger on F sharp, three finger on E, two finger on D, thumb to C, over the thumb with the three finger to B, two finger on A, and thumb on back to G, just like that. Now remember to keep good form. Remember to keep your fingers curved. Don't play flat fingered. And this is what you want to be able to do with not only the G scale, but all 12 of the major scales. Now let's go ahead and look at the melody of Victory in Jesus. Again, keeping in mind we're in the key of G, we're in the scale of G. So that means we're going to use the notes only that we used in the G scale, unless otherwise noted, which there will be a few instances here of, uh, 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 of that, where we have some, some, what they're called accidentals, some notes that are not in the key. But uh, for now, just think in the key of G. So the melody is the first thing you want to um, get a good grasp on. And if you know how to read notes and you're familiar with timing, and you can pretty much work through this melody, uh, then go ahead and skip ahead. But the melody in a hymn book is this note right here. Okay, It's the top note of the treble clef. That's, that's the, the familiar part of the song. It's if you were to say, sing Victor and Jesus, you'd sing the melody. Um, the other notes are the harmony, and they, um, they add... Uh, texture and, and uh, uh, you know uh, some uh, some harmony notes to the to the melody, but we don't recognize the song from that. Okay, so the melody um, is starts here on the the fourth beat of the of the of the measure, which is a pickup note. So we count four, and we basically don't play anything here except for the melody note, um, and then we start really playing right here. Um, so we go four, and that's a G. And then we come here. These, this is a dotted eighth with a sixteenth note. So it's counted one, a two. Okay, so a sixteenth note gets four sixteenth notes per beat. And so we're in four four time, and so it would be one e and a. That's how a sixteenth that's how sixteenth notes would fit into the beat. One e and a two e and a. Four no, four notes per beat. One, 
two, three, four. Now, when we have a dotted eighth against a sixteenth note, um, the dotted eighth accounts for three of those sixteenth notes, and then we just have the last one that we play again. One E and a two E and a. One E and a two E and a. So instead of one E and a two, we hold for the first three sixteenth notes, and then we play the a, uh, which is the last one. One E and a two. So we play G, B, a two, three. So that's this right here that we're playing is a half note gets two beats, and then a quarter note right here gets the f on the fourth beat gets one beat, and then this is an A for one beat, and then a G for two beats. So the first two measures is. Then we go into the third measure. Let me count it. Four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. Okay, so we're right here now, and this is an A. Same rhythm, though, and this can be tricky because you've got to change notes and play the dotted eighth with the sixteenth, but it's one, a two. Okay, so starting from right here, starting right here, it's A, G, G. So it's one, a two, three, four, one, two. Okay, that was glory, glory. So it's E to D there. All right, so the first four measures, here we go. Four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, a two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, at the very end of the first line, how he, it goes two Ds, they're eighth notes, so two notes per beat. Four, one. Okay, so let's go on to the next line. Again, we're looking at the melody, which is the top note of the treble clef. We're on measure six, gave his life. It goes like this. It's two, it's three Gs right in a row. The first two Gs, it's a dotted eighth with a sixteenth, and then an A, uh, a half note, which gets two beats, it's like this. Gave his life, right? One, a two, three, and then we go up to the A on the fourth beat, four. Now we've got that dotted eighth against the sixteenth note again, walking down from B to G. So it goes one, a two. Did you get that? B, A, G. One, a two, three. That's an a half note, so we hold it for for the second and third beat. On the fourth beat, we play this G to say a wretch. So we're on the A with that dotted eighth and sixteenth note rhythm again. It's say a wretch. And then we go up to the up to the B there. Say a wretch. And then we hold that wretch for two, two uh, beats, and then we go up to the B, four, and then down to the A again. This is a dotted half note right here. We hold the A for three beats. The dotted half note gets three beats. So hold it for three, and then this is a quarter note on G. One, four, one, a two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so we'll stop there, and I'll point out that this is very similar to what we just did here. This and this are the same. And measure 11 and this measure are the same. And then this measure and this measure are the same, and so is this measure and this measure, with the exception being here we have a quarter note as opposed to here is two eighth notes. And then right here we have, this is all different. This is new territory. So let's jump into here. We go from, the, from this, uh, oh, hold on a second. Let me get you so you can see it. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you could see that, what I was referring to, but... This is the same thing that we did at the beginning, from here to here. It's exactly the same. From here to right here. It's exactly the same. All right? So then we go to here. It changes. Uh, and this leads us into the chorus, these four measures. Okay? So we go, this is a D. Qu they're all quarter notes. Everything's a quarter note till we get to here, which is a dotted half, and it gets three beats. So let's just talk about the notes here. D. G, 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 A, B, A, G, G, A, A, G, F sharp, 
G for three beats, okay? So let's count it out starting with this right here. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So that's a nice contrast to the irregular rhythm at the beginning. This is all very straightforward and it brings us right into the chorus. It's just all quarter notes and it and it moves right it moves moves ahead right into the chorus. Okay, so starting on the chorus starting right here it goes B D D D E. Okay, and here you recognize that sixteenth note that dotted eighth with a sixteenth note rhythm again. This is pretty uh, characteristic of this song. It's a dotted, si dotted eighth against the sixteenth note, and then a half note, and then another quarter note. So that's the rhythm we get a lot. One, a two, three, four. One, a two, three, four. One, a two. So be on the lookout for that. We see that over and over again in the chorus and the verse. Um, so let's let's count it out. It's four, one, a two, three, four, one. Two, three. Okay, so that's B, G. Now we go back up to B here on the fourth beat. Quarter note, quarter note, half note. Ready? Four, one, two, three. And then here on the fourth beat to the G, forever. So it's four, one, two, three, four. Okay, this is the fourth beat right here. Four, one, two, on measure 22, that's two Gs. The first G is a quarter note, then a half note for two beats. So back up to he, and then we'll come down to measure 22. Four, one, two, three. Ba up to A on the fourth beat. Four, B for the first beat, and then down to G for two beats. Two, three, four. That's B, and then B again on the first beat. A on the second beat, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, let's play the whole chorus up to the point we've got, starting right here on the B. Four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're on measure twenty-two. One. Three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so with his redeeming blood, all quarter notes. Oh yeah, we already did this. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, now we have some more repeats. This is the exact same as the chorus that we just played when it uh, till it gets to here. Do him. But then when we get to here, when we get to, so from this point to this point, it's just what we've already done. Um, and then here is the, where it gets a little different to close out the chorus. Okay, let's start here with he. <coughs> Starts on a D on the fourth beat, goes up to G. Four, one, two, three. Then up to B on the fourth beat, four. Now here's that rhythm again uh, that you need to be familiar with. It's that on victory, on measure 31, we see that it's a dotted eighth. Oh, let me see. Let's see if I can get this up there. It's not all showing. Just a second. Well, I'll do it this way. You can see the the bottom there. It'd be a little smaller on you, but hold on a second. There we go. Let's do it this way. Okay, sorry about that. So we get up to victory. There it is, the uh, eighth n dotted eighth note with the sixteenth. So it's victory, 
One, a two, three. Then we go back down to the G on the fourth beat. Four. Then up to the B on the first beat. B, A, G, F sharp, G. Those are all quarter notes except for this last one, which is your dotted half gets three beats. Okay, so I know we flew through that. Um, if you if you don't know how to read notes, um, then that's uh, definitely that'll definitely help you if you can if you can uh, learn your notes. But uh, kind of follow along, pause the video, go back if you need to, and that'll help you learn your notes as you go through this, work your way through this melody. All right, let's start from the beginning, and we'll go through it. Now, pay attention to my fingering this time, because if you keep if through the whole verse, you can pretty much keep your hand in this position right here, with your thumb on the D, your two finger on the E, three finger on the A, four finger, uh, three finger on the G, four finger on the A, five finger on the B. This will pretty much uh, take you, uh, cover you throughout the entire verse. You don't have to move your hand at all. So it's just those fingers play those notes, and you'll get through the pretty much the whole verse. There may be one or two exceptions, but I'll hit those as I come to them. Um, I think once this two finger has to play this F sharp. But other than that, this position is what you want to stay for the verse. And we get to the chorus, you'll be switching from this position thumb on the G, two finger on the A, three finger on the B, four finger on the D, five finger on the E, and that original position. You kind of go back and forth a few times. But pay attention to the fingering and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Here comes the melody all the way through from the beginning. I'll just pause a few times to scroll the page. Ready? Four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four and one, a two, three, four, one, two, three. Four and one, a two, three, four, one, a two, three, four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, a two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. into the chorus. Now that right there is where you have to use this two finger on the F sharp. Won the victory. Right there. And then we're going to move our hand from this position to that other position I told you about. Like this. Okay. So in this position our three finger will be hitting that B. Here we go on the chorus. Four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, now here we're going to shift back to the original position. Right here. So we hit Jesus right there, and then we bring our pinky to this B for the original position. Ready? Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And as we continue on, here's measure 22. We're still in the original hand position. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And shift the hand again, three finger to B. Now we're back to this position. Thumb on G, two finger on A, three finger on B, four finger on D, five finger on E. Here we go. Four, one, a two, three, four. And keep your hands in that position for this, for measure 27. One, two, three, four, one, a two, three. Okay, so at the end of measure 27, so we'll go just the same as before. Um, I forgot to mention it, but when we get to and all my love, and we go to that pinky so we can shift our hand back to this position. And all my love. So it's on starting on and the end of measure twenty seven. Four, one, a two, three, four, one, two, three. Now here's the only exception. We're gonna stretch our hand out like this, because we're gonna we're gonna do that. We're gonna go out we're gonna outline a G chord, and so we need to use thumb there, 
two finger there, three finger there, and four finger there. It'll go like this. On he plunged me. Ready? Four. One, two, three, four. One, a two. That's this right here, measure 31. One, a two, three. Now we're going to go back to the original position. We're going to grab the G with the thumb. Four, and then pinky on the, we're going to squeeze our fingers together and use the pinky on the G, on the, I'm sorry, on the B. Four, one, two, three, four, one. Another option is to do your, outline your G chord like this. And then use your thumb here, three finger here, two finger on the A, thumb on the G, and then cross over like that and then back to the thumb. Okay, so either one. Um, I, probably that one is easier if you just... That's probably the easiest one. Um, so there's the melody and the fingering. Hopefully that uh, makes sense to you. Let's go on and talk about the chords. Let's talk about analyzing this hymn sheet um, to figure out, well, uh, how do we know what chord to play? Um, so the, the level one of playing a hymn is to play the melody in the right hand and a triad, which is a three-note chord, in the left hand to accompany the melody. It sounds like this. So that's uh, the first level we'll talk about. But from there, uh, we'll talk about how to make that, how to take the next step. Um, from there, you you can harmonize your melody in the right hand. And so that just means instead of playing one note in the right hand, figure out ways to fill in notes under the melody so that you're playing multiple notes in the right hand as well as the left hand. And uh, we're harmonizing the melody. It would sound like this. So well, that's all built off of, once you know the chords, um, you can take those steps uh, uh, of, of, uh, of harmony and add adding notes to it. But you got to know the chords first. So let's go ahead and analyze here. Again, you want to know your scales, so that way, as, and, uh, and uh, your chords and the relationship from the circle of fifths. Um, so we're thinking in the key of G, we've got, um, a we've got our one, four, and five chords are our primary chords in the key of G. That's what we need to think. Our one, four, and five. Now, how do you figure out the one, four, and five chord? Well, back to the scale. That's why the scales are so important. The one chord is the triad built from the first note of the scale. It's a three-note chord. Um, simply stated, it's just play every other note in the scale until you get a three-note chord. So there's your one chord, it's the G chord. It's named for its root note. So then, if that's the one chord, it's built off the first note of the scale. The fourth chord, or the four chord, would be the same formula built off the fourth note of the scale. So we go, there's the scale, there's the fourth note, it's the C. Then we play every other note from the scale until we get a three note chord. There's our, there's our four chord. Same process to the five chord. We go to the fifth note of the scale. Build, play every other note from the scale till we get a three note chord. Remember that F is sharp. Our five chord is the D chord. The five chord is uh, quite often played as a dominant seventh chord. That just means we extend, we play every other note until we get a four note chord. In doing so, we have this, um, this what's called a dominant chord because it's, uh, it's, it introduces a lot of tension and it strongly resolves to the one chord and that's used for strong effect as we as we play uh, the five chord and uh, that is basically how all cadences end in hymns I mean almost always uh, with few exceptions so you'll find that five chord introduced um, to bring the cadence to a resolve it's always how the, the song ends the verse ends many times we use that five chord to propel us into the chorus and so on and so forth 
But that tension can be um, can be uh, uh, enhanced by making it a four note chord, which introduces the the flat seven. Uh, it's uh, uh, it, it's it, the the seven is we call it a flat seven because if we were to go to the the key of D, it would actually be the seventh would look like that. But when the D is the five chord, the seventh is flattened and it gives us that great tension and resolve. So the five, seven, you'll see that, um, or the D7. So those are four pr or three primary chords. The one chord is the G, the four chord is the C, and the five chord is the D, or D7. Quite often the D7 will be played in this manner. C, F sharp, A, D, F sharp, C, or F sharp, C, D. This is just a way of voicing the five chord where it's still a three note chord. It makes it a little easier to play. And it is very common to omit the fifth note out of a dominant chord. So you'll find that even in more advanced music. This isn't just a beginner's concept, but uh, we'll, uh, so quite often the, five, the fifth note will be omitted and the root note will be omitted quite often. But uh, that aside, there's your five seven chord. So, how do we know which is which? Well, almost always the song will start on a one chord and will end on a one chord. But, with, ju with just three options, it's quite simple to figure out what chord goes with which measure. So, this measure pr has all B notes in the melody. So, there's only one chord of the three options that has a B in the chord. Okay, it's the G chord. G is a G, B, D. It has a B right there. So we know if we play a G chord, it's going to harmonize with that melody note. A C chord would not. It doesn't have a B in it. Nor does a B D chord. So if there's only three options, uh, there is, it's actually pretty simple to figure out. Um, but this is an oversimplification. We'll get into some uh, some exceptions here, and I'll tell you, teach you how to look for those. One of the one of the biggest helps in figuring out the chord is the bass note. You could almost just look at this song and play the chord that corresponds with the bass note, and you'll pretty much get it. Pretty much get it right. Um, for example, here on the beginning, it's a G note in the bass. This is a G chord the whole time. G note in the bass, G chord in this measure. It's a C note in the bass. This is a C in this measure. Back to G, G chord. It's an E note in the bass. This is actually an E chord, but it's not an E major chord. It's an E minor chord. And you would know that, of course, if you understand your scale, you know the 1, 4, and 5 chord are major. The 2, 3, and 6 chords are minor. So this is actually the 6 chord. Going back to our scale, the 1, 4, and 5 chords are major chords, but the 2, uh, two 3, and 6 chords are minor chords. So when we have that E, e in the bass, we say, well, that's a... That's an, that's a E in the E minor e, e chord in G is minor, so we got an E minor here. Now this um, goes from G to E, but this is for a beginner. This would be played as a continuing an E minor throughout this measure. And here we have an exception. Okay, we have an A down here, so you'd be pretty safe to go from here and just look at that A note and say, oh, it's an A chord. But here's an accidental. You see that C sharp. So we have to analyze this measure and figure out what's going on here. So let's stack up the notes that we see that are being used. That bottom note is this. Oh, sorry, it's down here. The tenor note, okay, that's the note, that's the, uh, the top note in the bass clef, is this E. And then the, the bottom note in the treble clef is an E. And the melody note is an A. So if we were to stack all those up, it's we have an A, we have an E, and we have a C sharp. And we have the A again doubled as the melody. This is an A major chord. And the accidental raises that C. In the key of G, the C should be natural, and the A minor, A should be a minor chord. But when we raise the C to a sharp, we have an A major. Now, this is a very common progression in, in music and in hymns. This is a secondary dominant, or it's called the five chord of the five. Um, so it's, this is not functioning as a six chord. It's functioning as, a, as a, uh, the five chord leading us to the five chord. It's a major 
it's a major two chord. Um, so sometimes it's just called a major two chord. Sometimes people refer to it as an extended dominant or the five of five. Um, so all those work. But uh, anytime we're going to go to a chord using a uh, using a chord to to lead us to that chord, um, it's got a great effect. So if I want to go to a G chord, uh, I want to use that D chord to get there. So, so I'm going on a G chord, and I want to go. I use that D chord to get to that the G chord. If I add the seventh, it makes it even better to get to there. Well, the same concept can be extended out, which is why we call it an extended dominant. If I want to go, if I'm going to go to a G, and I'm going to use a D to get to a G, well, can I use a chord to get to the D to bring me to the G? And the answer is yes. Quite often in hymns, we'll use the uh, the minor version of the two chord to get to the five chord. That's a two five one. Very common in jazz and uh, all kinds of music using the two five one. But the two is minor. Now let's alter the two chord and make it a major chord, and that gives it a whole new effect, a whole new feeling as we get as we go from the as we get, as we find our way back to the one chord. So, in this case, we're going from this E minor, then use the A major, there's the D chord, and now we're back to the G. So it's a very, um, it's an unexpected movement because we've got that accidental in there. It's a strong movement because we've got two dominant chords bringing us to um, it's kind of like dominoes falling. The the A7 brings us to that D, but that D7 is the dominant chord, so we're still not home. And then we get that D7 that brings us to a G major, which is um, our one chord, and and it's a powerful movement back to the one chord. So keep an eye out for the two chord that is made major, and they use that to go to the five to bring us home to the one. It's all, it's uh, very common, commonly used in hymns. Okay, so here we go. We're on the C chord. Then we've got the G chord here. We've got an E minor. Now that E minor is actually um, a l strong lead to the A. Okay, so th using the five chord of our target chord is um, a strong is is a is a is a way to strongly lead to that chord. So the five chord of G is D, so we use a D to get to G. In this case, the five chord of D is A, so we use an A to get to D, which brings us to G. Well, the five chord of A is E, and uh, we use that E minor, which leads us to the A. This is becomes an A major, which leads us to the D, which is a D seven, which leads us to the G. So this whole movement right here is just uh, really great sounding movement. You want to make sure you get these uh, these chords right in here. Okay, so this is the same as before, and it changes here. So following the bass note, it's almost always going to be the bass note will correspond with the chord. So we've got E in the bass. This is an E minor. Then we're going to we're going to use we're going to look at this measure here in a moment because this has got um, some passing chords that are used each beat and uh, really good so we'll look at that in just a moment um, then here this is a C chord or you could you could call it an A minor chord and this is a G chord over a D note um, to a D chord and then back home so we'll talk about this G over D in just a moment let's continue on the chorus following just the bass note Oh. Uh, sorry, I don't think you guys could see what I was talking about there. Let's see here. This, uh, yeah, there you go. This is the passing chords. This here is the A minor I was talking about. This is the G chord over a D note. Um, the bass note, again, is very influential on what the flavor of the chord is. So you might say, well, that's just a G. But since it's over a D and it's right before this D7, it actually is very important that we recognize as a D uh, as a G over a D chord. Uh, I'm sorry, a G chord over a D note in the bass. Okay, so then we go to D7 and then G. How do we know that? Following the bass note. 
Throughout the chorus, we follow the bass note. It says G chord, G chord, G chord, G chord, C chord, G chord. Then E minor and E minor. Back to G here, G, G. Then we go back to that A7. This is a, 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 a uh, this is a major two chord, right? The five of five. We're gonna go A7, D7, back to G. A7, D7, then back to G. Very strong movement. Okay. So we got the G chord here. Look at the bass note. G, G, G. So we got a G chord through that measure. G chord through this measure. C on the bass. We got a C chord here. G back to G chord. You see the G here in the bass. Let me move that up. And we keep a G chord all the way through to here, as you can see. And then we have these. This measure has four different chords. They all move every beat. This could be a real challenge, but it sounds really good if we get them right. And then back to the G chord. So go ahead and do your best to fill those in um, based upon what I just gave you. And I'm going to switch over to the, um, the version here that has the chords filled in. Okay, so let's look here. Looking here at um, the chords that I've mentioned, let me just sh uh, point out a few other things here. The passing chords I told you about. Okay, so we're right here. This is a G chord. So if we were to just look at the notes and stack them up, we've got uh, the bass note is this G. Then the bottom note of the of the mel of the b treble clef is this D, and then we've got this B as the melody. So that's um, G B D. That's just a G chord. But the bass note moves every beat, unlike the other measures. The other measures stays pretty consistent throughout the entire measure. So we have some passing chords. So we go from this G. Now let's stack up these notes uh, in the second beat. Okay, we've got an A, we've got a D sharp, those are the two notes in the treble clef, and then the bass ha gives us another A and an F sharp. Okay, this is what's called a diminished chord. Uh, we've got several different types of chords. We've got major chords, minor chords, lower the third note, um, and then we have diminished chords and augmented chords. Diminished chords, it's... Um, they're symmetrical chords in that they have, um, they're all, uh, it's a stack of minor thirds, or basically um, three semitones, three half steps. So uh, a majors, major and minor chords are not symmetrical in that way. We've got like a major chord has four half steps and then three half steps, or a minor chord has three half steps and then four half steps. But for augmented chords, and diminished chords, they are a stack of the same interval. So the diminished chord gets its name because we take the major chord and we diminish it or bring it down. We bring down the top two notes like that, half step. Uh, an augmented chord is uh, a stack of uh, major thirds or four semitones, four half steps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it's again, it's a symmetrical chord. So it's uh, uh, it's the same interval stacked on top of each other. And if you'll notice, um, it would repeat itself. As we continue stacking up major thirds, we just continue on like that. Same thing with a diminished chord, although there's that that it's a four note chord before it starts repeating itself. So diminished chords are used um, uh, in place of dominant chords. Okay, so this diminished chord is actually um, the it's it's a B seven without a B, and a B seven, if you'll notice, is the five chord. It's a it's the five chord of an E minor. So we're going to go from G to D to F sharp. Uh, well, it's actually an F sharp diminished, but it's invertible, right? You can see how you can go from here. Um, so it's D sharp diminished, or you could call it an F sharp diminished. Um, we go from here to the E minor. So we've got this this B7, which is the 5 of E minor, but we're not using the B, so that makes it a D sharp diminished, to the E minor, 
And then from E minor, now we see that E minor because it's if we stack up the notes, this these are your two notes in the bass clef right here. These are your two notes in the treble clef. If you put them all together, you have an E chord, an E minor chord. An E major chord would look like this. Here's your E minor chord. So we've got this G, D sharp diminished, E minor, and then the next chord is a G chord, but it's got an F natural in with it. Now this is also an extended dominant. Uh, if you go back to your circle of fifths and you understand uh, we reach outside the key to get that A7 for that extended dominant, which brings us to the 5-7, which takes us, takes us back to the 1 chord. We do the same thing, but if we want to go the other direction and to get to use an extended dominant the other way, um, we end up with the 1 chord as a dominant chord. So we stack up a four note chord on the G, we would get this major seven chord. Major seven because the the seventh note is not flattened. But in this case, to make it a dominant chord, we we make the F natural and we've got a major chord with a flat seven and now we've got a now we've got the one chord as a as a seventh seventh chord. And this is gonna lead us to that 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 C chord is coming next or it's an A minor over a C, so it sounds, sounds like we're going to a C chord. And so we use those four passing chords to give some really nice movement. And if you can get that in there, um, it'll really make it sound good. So in the left hand, if you're just going to do one note in the right hand, the left hand would play just the chords I've explained. G... D sharp diminished, E minor, G7, and then we would go to a C or an A minor, e A minor with a C as the bottom note for the next measure. Okay, so let's look at um, the next measure, and I'll explain a G over a D chord. Okay, so measure 20, uh, measure 16 has a C in the bass, so you can play a C chord, and that'll give you a C6 sound, C chord with the sixth note added, or you can think of it as an A minor 7, a minor chord with a seventh on top of it, and that's going to give you this It's going to give you that sound right there. So we got the C6 for the first two beats, but then look at that D where it says D sus. That means D suspended. And you can think of this as a D suspended chord, or you can think of it as a G over D. Probably most people would say, no, it's a G over D. And uh, But a G over D at the end of a cadence sounds like a suspension. Um, a suspended chord just means you take the third note and you move it. Okay, You can either move it up or move it down. Those are both su suspended chords. This is D. This is D sus four. It's called D suspended to the fourth note, or that's D sus two. What we're dealing with here is a D sus four, um, but it's actually a G over D. But it sounds like that suspended movement because it's just one note away from being a, a D sus. So we've got G over D to D seven to G. All right. So, um, in the left hand, D and B. In the right hand, D and G. And so that gives us this G chord with a D in the bass, which moves to a D7, and then to the G. Okay, so it's, in, again, that bass note tells you everything you need to know. You go to that, and you say, well, that's a G chord. But you look at the bass note and see there's a D down there, and say, well, this is, this is, functioning as like a predominant chord um, or a, a five suspended. So uh, it would sound like this. So watch out for those. Um, you'll find suspended chords all throughout um, hymns and, and all kinds of music, but also you'll find that, that, five, that, that one chord over the five um, as kind of a precursor to the five chord. Similarly, you'll find the um, 
the four chord over the five is a similar um, movement. If I were to play a C over a D before I get to the G, okay, a C chord with a D in the bass before I get to the G, that's kind of like a, a roundabout, more uh, less obvious way to get to the one chord. And this is very popular in gospel music. So keep an eye out for those. The more hymns you learn, the more hymns you'll know just because all this stuff is repeated over and over again in hymns uh, and hymn playing. So moving on uh, throughout the chorus, let me uh, point this out. Here we've got that natural F again in this G chord. This is another example of an extended dominant. We are reaching outside the key to make the one chord a dominant chord so that it will lead us to the four chord. So the five, the five of C is G. So if we want to get to C in a, sh in, a, in, a, in a stronger movement, then we would make its five chord, we would use its five chord to lead us there. The five chord of C is the one chord in the key of G. So we take the one chord to lead us to C. But if we make the one chord a uh, seventh chord, a dominant chord, we add that F natural to it, it's a very um, uh, exciting way to get to the four chord because we're introducing an accidental, we're ex introducing um, some attention note to the one chord, um, we're reaching outside the key, it's just something unexpected. Uh, and again, that's something very common. Uh, in hymns, you'll find that we add that we add the flat seven to the one chord when we're going to go to the four chord. Okay, so you'll see that there. It also happens uh, right here again, as you can see towards the end of the chorus, and I think it happens up here in the verse once. Let's see, it does not happen, but you could do it right here because we're using the five, we're going from the G to the C. We can add the seventh right here to get to this C chord. Um, let's see here, and you could also do it here. Add the seven, uh, add the seven to this G chord to get to this C chord. All right, so let's continue on um, talking about how to uh, voice this last measure here. This is um, another example. Here we've got the G over D, so this could function like a D suspended. Um, and then we've got the G chord, and then a C chord, or this is really an A minor chord over C, or you could think of it as a C six chord, or an A minor six chord, or A minor seventh chord. Nonetheless, you can just play the A in the right hand and a C chord in the left hand. It'll give you that sound. Um, but this, these chords change every beat, as opposed to most of the song where they change every measure. Let's go ahead and look at how this would sound. G to C to G over D. So you can really think of this as a D suspended. You could even play it as a D suspended, like that. So uh, let me show you again. Okay. So again, I would encourage you to think of this as a D chord, a G over D, but it's really, it's a, it's a type of D chord. So don't, don't play a G in the bass here, because then you, you don't get that prolonged tension um, that leads us to the one. It's just like a one, five, one, whereas it could be a one, four, five, one, which is much stronger of a movement. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how we would play this. Um, Again, keeping in mind your finger positions, if you're just going to do one note in the right hand, take a look at how we would play this with a chord in the right hand.
right, so I slowed down there on that one measure because that's where we've got those chords changing every beat. Um, and that, that can be hard uh, at first, but uh, if you get those right there, it's really it's really uh, a pretty movement there. So let me play that measure for you again into the chorus. All right, so let's talk about how we can take this um, to the next level and uh, just spend a few minutes here because we've already been uh, going on for about an hour. Um, but the next step after you're comfortable and familiar with chords and you can read the chords pretty well um, is to add or harmonize the melody. So what you do is you take and you, instead of playing one note in the as, as the melody, you play other notes in the right hand along with the melody. And you just fill in notes underneath the melody note that go along with the chord. So the first chord is a G chord, and a G chord has a G, a B, and a D in it. The melody note in the right hand is a B, so we can fill in the D or the G underneath. It's important that you fill in under the, the melody because if the melody is the top note, it will be recognizable and you'll hear the melody. If I were to just fill in any, it would just sound like uh, you would not be able to recognize the song as easily. So, um, you might say, oh yeah, I can, uh, I can hear it, but um, for someone who's not, not, you know, not expecting to hear it, they're not going to pick that up as easily. So make sure you fill in under the chord, and uh, fill in as much as possible, fill in two or three notes, one or two notes so that every time you're playing two or three note chord in the right hand. So it would be something like this. Again, don't worry about the pickup note, but as we get into that first full measure, okay, so on story, that's a G chord, but none of these these notes fit in the G chord. Now this is uh, like a passing chord, a passing tone, and it's actually um, it's it's like an A minor over a G. This is a very gospel movement. Anytime you want to sound gospely, you can go from the one chord to the minor two chord. Sounds very gospely to do that. If you want to make it gospel slash blues, make the one chord a minor chord as we do that run. That uh, that's 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 what's going on here. We got an A minor over a G, and we're just sliding into that G. So you can play the whole A minor chord there, or you can just play the A into your triad, or just play what's written. I do that quite often. If I'm not sure, I'll just play the notes that are written there to get into the next part where I'm familiar with. So, it would sound like this. Now there, my hands are too close to get a three note chord in the right hand, so you can, it's not a big deal. I would say just go ahead and play one note in the right hand, but as you get better, an option is to move your hand up an octave, and then you can play a three note chord on every melody note uh, because you have plenty of room.
Now that um, you know that uh, is getting t- is sounding good. Your hands are s- moving, are getting spread apart. You're playing three note chords in both hands. What's missing though is some dimension or some some uh, some uh, you know a, a wider spread. Uh, I hear a lot of notes up here and some mid range, but what we're missing is that down there, which would really make it sound good if we could get those in there. So how do we get those in there? To start. Just play one octave per measure um, in the bass, and the octave would be the chord. So if it's a G chord, you play a D octave, a uh, G octave. So it sounds like this. In doing this, you want your left hand to be low. You want to bring in that bass. Um, now, but the, here's the problem. We've s- we've traded one problem for another. Now we're missing the mid range. It'd be nice to hear some of this. We've got this down here. We've got these bright notes up here, but we're missing this warm texture here. And so the next step is to continue playing, th- f- harmonizing the melody. Um, continue using the bass and playing the bass, but um, twice move your hand and play one octave per measure and one chord per measure. So it would, it would on a 4-4 four, four song, a song in 4-4 four, four time, four beats per measure, it would end up with the octave on the first beat and held for the first and second, chord on the third and fourth. And now we've got all of those textures ringing out as we play the melody. From there, um, w- the right hand basically keeps stays the same for the next step as well. The next step would be to double up the left hand pattern. Instead of just doing one octave per measure and one chord per measure, now we're going to try to do do it do that pattern twice. Now this is tricky because you get your left hand has to move and you have to be able to do it without much thought. And the pattern changes slightly. Um, go ahead and try playing the, the, the G to the G chord, and then you use the fifth note of the chord for the third beat. So we're going to G chord. We're going to bounce. The bass will bounce from the G octave chord, D octave chord. And so we're using the one of the chord for our first octave and the five of the chord for our second octave. That's the pattern on all the chords. So we go for G, it's G, D, G, D. When we get to the D chord, it's D. The five chord of the D chord is A, so we go. Right, you recognize that. Um, You hear it all the time in music. We're taking it to the next level here, so. The C chord would be, we use the C for our first octave and then the G for our second octave. It goes C chord, G chord, G chord, G. And we do that, we do that movement every beat like this. So from there, we can start f- we can start filling in in the left hand. As you saw there towards the end, you can walk to and from um, different octaves of the chord. Um, but let's 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 start adding to the right hand now, because the right hand is getting left behind. Um, from here, what you want to do is s- is take the right hand to the next level um, and add uh, make it a four note chord as much as possible. 
um, and play octaves or full note, four note full chords in the right hand, it would be like this. We were adding the the other notes from the chord besides the melody note, and we add them under the melody, right? What you do is you double the top note of whatever we're doing. So we're doubling the melody note. Now the right hand is going to sound very full. Um, we've got a four note chord going on in the right hand. Now this is definitely getting up to the advanced territory because now the right hand and left hand are both doing challenging things. And uh, you really have to know your chords and your fingering and be very familiar with the keyboard and be comfortable spreading your hands apart and playing without looking uh, a lot of the times. Um, quite often you'll find yourself having to look at your left hand and your right hand has to kind of go on autopilot. Um, and you have to be able to feel your way around these inversions. What I'll do when it's hard is sometimes I will, uh, if, the, if the melody is moving quickly, I will just play an octave. Or I will add in, that's real easy to get that, that voicing. When you add that in, you try to move quickly. It can be a real brain twister. But that's much easier if I just omit one note. And then when, it's, when I'm doing some repeated melody notes, it's very easy to fill it in and make it a four note chord. But this would sound like this. So that's how um, you can add in the the right hand, the left hand, fill in the left hand, fill in the right hand. Um, now I'll just mention real briefly the the left hand movement that you can use um, when moving from G to C or G to D. It works out perfectly because they're a fifth apart, and so they line up perfectly in the left hand to move in two beats or one beat or even four beats because it's like if I want to go from G to C in the left hand say if the chord is moving to a C we can go eighth notes I can move down and it'll line up perfectly three and four and one I could do this on the second full measure moving to C But there's all kinds of ways you can walk or run in the left hand. If you walk like you go, you go one note per beat down. You know, that's kind of like a, a walking bass, walking down. If you go eighth notes, it sounds kind of like a run. If you try to do sixteenth notes, that those are challenging, and they can they quite often they sound muddy. So be careful using those sixteenth notes. Um, but there you have it. Went uh, victory in Jesus um, from beginner to advanced. Uh, hope that helps you. Hope that was a great. Uh, hope you followed along well, and you can learn this song.